Hello, everybody. I'm Richie, and we are having the proper hunter talk this week. So last week, what would have ended up happening is I forgot to press the record button, and I was basically making a rambly video when I realized that I wanna, I wanna like still do the hunter talk. But when I realized that I didn't press record, I was just very angry at myself, so I just kind of forgot about what I wanted to talk and just randomly ranted about some stuff. So this time around, we are a bit more organized. We brought notes <laughs> to help us through this. We're going to talk about Night V vs. Curian for the last time. I don't know, just what I'm playing and why. Single target versus AoE, the legendaries. Uh, and then we're gonna have a quick look at the Eye of the Jailer and the Nine at the boss fights in this Hunter talk. Because I don't think they are worthy of uh, of an entire walkthrough, so to say. So I will just mention my two cents in this one. Alright, so... Here on the side I'm just preparing a sim really quickly. Uh, let us finish that one because I'm just like we have unlocked full potential of our soul binds this week and we can now finally sim properly I guess we could have simmed properly before as well but like I wasn't like paying too much attention to it to be honest like I, I don't I don't care what sims best next week. I can just wait till next week and sim it next week then. I don't need to sim it in advance. Like if I wanna swap to Kurian, I can just grind out the renown in a week regardless. And it doesn't doesn't get magically shorter of a grind to do it um like later or earlier, basically. So yeah, starting off the sim. I know that I have simmed with uh, Streamline, that's on purpose, because I'm not playing Steady Focus. What? Why are you not playing Steady Focus? I hate the talent. Just while we while we wait for the sim to be done. As long as the DPS check isn't super giga necessary, I will always play the lazy option on that tier. Like, this talent ruins the spec for me. It, it removes all the fun that I have with the spec, to be honest. It's... I don't know. It's, it's just stupid, in my opinion. It shouldn't be... like it is. It should be something different. Period. Oh yeah, looks like the sims have rolled in. So, let us take a look. Okay. Kurian 1. With... Forge Light Mechanicus. Okay, we are gaining 200 DPS over our current setup if we play this guy. So, let's scroll down a bit. Where are we? Okay, current gear. Kurian, Kurian, Kurian. Just want to see if there is an, a setup from Night Fae that's in here. No, there's not. Okay. Then I just want to run one sim again. And there is a reason I didn't incorporate this Soulbind in this current sim. But Dreamweaver is pretty good, guys. Dreamweaver is pretty damn good when it comes to simming. Because... Uh, in a sim, your character always stands in Fields of Blossoms. But in a much more real scenario, especially in Sanctum of Domination, I tried it on Heroic. It's kind of hard to pull off the Field of Blossoms thing. Like, um, this spell right here just gives you mastery, period. Okay? This spell, like, here gives you damage, this spell like here gives you crit. It just happens. But this spell like here, oops, this spell here gives you a rune of power that's 
absurdly small. Like... Look at this. I'm in it. And as soon as I step out of it, the haste is gone. So, there is a huge chance you are not getting the full uptime of this spell. And that's the thing. You need to be standing in this for the vast majority of its duration for like at least 20 seconds or something like that for it to be worth. So it's kind of a sim trap, to be honest. Um, I don't know if I have logs from Raid that I could pull up, but like it's, it's just a bit stupid. Let's just put it at this. It's just a bit stupid. Okay, this is the Dreamweaver sim that's uh, completed now. Or is it this one? Sheet. Which one is it? Um, oh, it's this one. It's fine. So we can scroll down a bit. Okay, here is a Dreamweaver. Here is a Dreamweaver. Oh, we are really stupid. Here is a dream weaver. Here is a dream weaver. Dream weaver. Dream weaver. Dream weaver. Oh ho. Yo, dream weaver is ascending, dude. So yeah. If you can manage to pull up pull off dream weaver, Kurian is only a hundred damage behind. Which is something I'm willing to sacrifice, to be honest. Like Gaining 100 damage for the fact that I have my cooldowns desync is is not worth for me. Like, like I'm more I'm more willing to play around stupid uh, rune of power than to play around the one minute and the two minute CD. So yeah, night fade is for me, but I will I will still play Naya for the most part. I will definitely play Dreamweaver to so just fool around with it and just have fun. And same goes with Corain. I'm so excited to to run some keys with this boy. I did some sims with this yesterday that really surprised me to be honest. Uh, just pulling it up really quickly. Where is it? Um, cleave ad over here. Okay, here for example, this is a sim I did yesterday for determining my M plus stuff. And Corain is quite a bit behind. Like, this sim specifically is kind of cool for Corain because you constantly spawn adds that proc first strike. But even in those scenarios, Corain doesn't win anymore. Like, previously for me, Corain won in all the cleave ad sims, but Naya won in all the patchwork sims. Like patchwork, five targets, Naya won. Cleave ad, Corain won. So nowadays though, Corain even loses on cleave ad. Which is sad to be honest. Because I really like Corain. And you will definitely see me play Corain. Just randomly, not only on spiteful weeks, because I just like the the fact how it plays and gives you crit and stuff. But but I think it's just some guessing. But I think the combination of having three potencies as opposed to only having two is just what makes Naya win here. And like I mean, of course, like this whole bunch of mastery and stuff you get as well. But like I'm I'm just a bit confused as to why this guy loses all of a sudden but yeah it was definitely sad to see that but yeah um just to kind of shoehorn into the next topic that i wanted to discuss i'm like 99% sure that you play surging shots always like always for m plus like, if we put on our M-plus gear... 
and talents and everything. Um, and we plop that into raid bots. Come on. Okay, and then we just do just do the comparison of those two. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One boss, five minutes, and just run it like this. Like it isn't even that huge of a loss, is what I have discovered. Because I was previously on this team of people that would think you might play a different legendary based off Tyrannical versus Fortified or even based on the dungeon. But I'm pretty confident in not doing that anymore. Like, wait, hold up. This is some new developments I'm seeing here. Yo! Okay, dude. Yeah, okay, that's, e that's even more proof. Like, what? It's one target, five minutes. Yeah, and and you see, surging shot wins on a single target sim. So there is little to no reason at all to play Serpent Sting then. Which also begs a question. What if I change to single target? Like full single target. I've never done this sim. Because why? So I'm just I'm just curious what will win here now. I think it might be SST now. I'm really curious. Like that's that's almost weird to me. Yeah, okay. But it's 60 DPS behind. 60 DPS on single target. Like you could almost like if you're a very lazy person that doesn't want to bother with Serpent Sting multi-dotting and stuff like that, you could play surging shots as a single target legendary nowadays. Like it's it's not far behind, right? So yeah, that's that. On some fights, you would still play the Elder Endless Fragments. Like we will see in the, the 9 video that I'm playing it there. And it's quite cool on that fight. Because the fight never exceeds 4 targets. Like even at the intermission, you have 2 bosses. 1 add and the big boss. It's 4. So especially if you have CDs for the time where the, the, the third boss gets down. As I had in my video, it's a big pump, a big pump at that moment because you have four targets and you just cleave all of them. Which is very cool. So yeah, that's that. My, just a quick TLDR. My TLDR is... Is I will stay Night Fey. Naya. I will still play around with Dreamweaver, maybe, good, but annoying. Naya is gleich big pog. Dreamweaver may be good, but annoying because of Rune of Power. Korain is my favorite soulbind, but seems to lose in sims might need some stupidity to work what do i mean by might need some stupidity to work it needs first strike up time it just needs first strike up time a lot that's that's what i mean by that like, I'm definitely doing keys this week with Korain, though. I just wanna... I just wanna see how much uptime you get on, on like, this guy, Wild Hunt Stratagem. I wanna see how much first strike I get. Usually I get around 25. Maybe I can min-max that a bit. But it seems to be that Naya is just strictly better. But, yeah, I love Korain and I will always play it a bit in keys. I'm not pushing too seriously, so... For my weekly 15 keys, Korain is absolutely blasting. 
like ab-so-freaking-lutely and I just have this suspicion that's creeping up on me currently um, where is my dungeon slice yo where did we hide it not dungeon slice cleave at where is it yo that far down okay like I have a suspicion now that I didn't confirm when I made that sim but if I do cleave at two bosses two minutes Turn off heroism, go. Like, I think Karain might win here even. Alright, uh, next up, single target versus AoE or like raid versus M+. In raid, again, for Night Fae, you play SST. Then on some bosses you can play Surging. Oh no, no, for raid. SST. Or antlers, or even sus for some bosses. Some bosses you can definitely play surging shots or antlers. So yeah, con my my suspicion is confirmed here. It's because of the length of the sim. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Corain maybe not out of the bag completely, but we will do some testing. Because I'm curious myself. M plus. Sus. Always. Just always. There's no reason not to. Just does more damage. Alright. So now that we talked about that. Um, yeah. Castle Nathria. No. Sanctum. Mythic. I have the Jailer. Really quick. Just what I wanted to show here. There's nothing really you can do as a hunter specifically that no one else can. Just like to show what I am doing. Um, it makes me kind of not lose a lot of DPS. Like I pop CDs on pull. But due to having sharpshooters it overlaps with the dragging chains. What I do is I just disengage. While disengaging you can use like, like spells, rapid fire. And then it's over, and you, you barely lose a cast. I think I could have gotten one more aim shot if I didn't uh, have to move here. So then I just move here quickly, and then I just press the action button for the chain and just move over. And while you're flying, you can hit spells. I don't know if people know that, but while you're flying, you can hit every ability that you can hit on the move. Like you can hit rapid fire, steady shots, and arcane shots. So definitely do that. There might even be a time where I am pressing rapid fire in this VOD specifically. This video will, by the way, be on YouTube uh, soon. I will upload it together with everything. So there might be a few videos coming. But yeah, here am I doing? Oh no. Just checking if that's maybe... <laughs> Is this the rapid fire one? Yeah, see, you can just cast rapid fire while flying. And you lose no uptime if you do that. So, definitely do that. And also, what you can do, I'm not doing this in the VOD because I didn't have. I didn't find myself in a situation where I have to do it. Or I had to do it, rather. You can turtle through the beam of the eye, like when he does his eye beam demon hunter thing. Like this guy. You can just turtle through this. Like when he starts his eye beam, you can stay here. The eye beam approaches, you turtle and go through. Or you soul shape blink through it. But I actually think it's not worth doing it because as a hunter, you can press most of your spells anyways. So just when you approach the chain, make sure you're not capping aim shots. And as soon as you hit the chain, boom. Just press buttons, you don't lose any uptime, it's like perfect. There's no reason to dodge the beam in a stylish manner to gain like a cool twitch clip or something because it's not really a DPS increase to do that. It's not worth doing. Uh, yeah, My setup for this boss was pretty like standard, I probably should have talked about that at the start of the video. 
uh, or, or at the start of the clip or what rather. I'm just playing full single target with streamline because it's not that huge of a DPS check. Playing IQD and the world boss trinket because it's my highest simming combo that is not double on use. Like this combination right here is simming higher, but it's double on use and that's annoying. And this is my second, this is my best single on use trinket combination I have. So that's what I'm running. I only have a normal item level ocular, ocular gland. So it's not that worth for me. It doesn't win uh, in Sims for me. That's what I want, um, wanted to say. So that's why I'm using the World Boss Trinket. Sims best for me. Period. No other thought into that. So it's my, my setup. I run for like everything currently. I played double on use for 90% of the first patch of Shadowlands and I just don't want to do it anymore. Like I said, if the DPS checks ever tight, I will swap to everything that increases every, every single DPS point that I can get. That, that increases my DPS by every, every single point that I can get. But currently we are not running into DPS checks. Uh, so no point in doing that. Yeah, so that's that. And now I can just... The 9. There's just one thing I wanted to mention quickly with the 9. That's a boss where you can run the antler fragments which is what i am doing here and it just gives you a huge burst uh, in the opener i did not run volley on this fight and i think it was a mistake that i didn't i think volley would have increased my damage here by a pretty substantial amount but i just wanted to see how i do without volley pray to the lock and load gods a bit because that's what i like doing <laughs> And like, the first phase is over rather quickly and I just wanted to squeeze out every point of DPS that I can get for the last phase. Of course it's always a gamble because luck and, because luck and load needs to proc and volley is an active button. So I know that's not like the most smart thing to do to play lock and load on this fight, but I chose, I chose to play with it just to get a feel for the fight and stuff it was my first night on the fight it was not it wasn't our first kill it was our second kill because i was away for our first kill uh so i just wanted to get a feel for the fight and this was like our my third pull on the on this um and i didn't i didn't know like the spawn timers of the ads and anything like those those small guys, like, I didn't do much research into how the ads spawn and how our kill time is lining up with volley and stuff like that. So if I had done the research, I would probably come to a conclusion as to where to play volley or where to use volley rather. I would know if the ads spawns line up with volley or not, but I didn't put in any of those, like of those minutes to research that so I just went with lock and load and played that but just just take 10 minutes of your day and research that guys don't be lazy also I was assigned to this soak always nothing special to talk about there really you can if you have a debuff you can turtle this soak of course it's same as with any other of the soaks just turtle it and this is like the big moment that I was talking about where the last boss gets down, you have the add as well and it's just beautiful four target cleave and I'm just ascending here a bit on the meters. Like this CD window bumps me up like a big time, like entering those CDs here. With 8.5k on the meters. And after my first aim shot, I'm at 9k. Then we pop heroism and everything. And I'm at 10k, 10k, 10.5k, 11k, 11.5, 11.6. Like, this overlap is so huge for the. Elder Antlers Fragment. 
And it's such a satisfaction to blast out the aim just there that proc the wild spirits. Like that's that's a good feeling, to be honest. So yeah, that's that. And then there's nothing really going on. Like just just dodge stuff really and soak stuff, I guess. Nothing to talk about specifically about this fight. It's, uh, it's a quite a long one. It takes like... Do I have a timer somewhere I can find? Yeah, here. It's like an 8 minute fight or something. Where, where it's like dodge stuff. Thank you. Bye. Like, it's quite boring. I mean, it's a fun boss. Just pump. Just... Stand there, dodge stuff, and pump. But it feels quite long for what it is, to me at least. So yeah, we got through everything we talk we I wanted to talk about. Night Fae versus Kurian, just a quick recap. Night Fae versus Kurian, we will stay Night Fae for as long as I can... I can accept the fact that I'm to am a certain number, like, weaker on on damage but currently it's like 200 damage if i if i want to have 200 damage i could play steady focus haha <laughs> no but like currently i don't feel the need to min max my damage to that degree that i justify giving up night fate to be honest like soul shape is so great for sylvanas and uh, not soul shape night fate is so great for sylvanas and for painsmith having soul shape is giga bis you can just dodge and blink out of so many things last second and I don't want to give up all of that. Also, this node right here does some substantial healing when you take damage. There's just a very well-rounded soulbind tree and I don't want to give that up easily or quickly rather. So yeah. You will see me playing Naya and Karain, mostly. Maybe some Dream Weaving, I don't know. I think I will set the Dream Weaver Soulbind to Beast Mastery or something like that, I don't know. Because yesterday, on just a quick spoiler for the next video, when progressing Remnant, I found myself delaying a lot of aim shots, or not being able to do a lot of aim shots because I'm. I'm assigned to drop off the bombs. So I I wanted to swap Beast Mastery and I ended up not being able to swap Beast Mastery because <laughs> you have a conduit here that's not working with Beast Mastery and you have a conduit here that's not working with Beast Mastery. And so I prepared Dreamweaver with BM. And I just I just make Dreamweaver my BM soulbind. I think that's what we're gonna do. Is that's my plan looking forward and maybe maybe my next like if we kill remnants sometime soon i think i will kill it as bm hunter because i'm not sure how to like i need to review my vault from yesterday to myself and see where i'm missing out on aim threat casts but uh there was definitely times where i was like unable to 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 do an aim shot basically which is like I think a similar problem that Roger Brown was facing during the race to World First on Painsmith, where he was like dropping or popping all the traps and has had all that random movement that he couldn't plan around necessarily, so he just swapped BM to not worry about it. I think that's at least that's what I think that that was his like what his reasoning was like. Just to, to be moving around freely. And I, I kind of need the freedom of moving around because I'm tasked to dropping off orbs. And yeah, I had a hard time optimizing my aim shots around that, to be honest. So yeah, I might see, you might see me play Beast Mastery Hunter on that side. So yeah, this video is growing longer and longer. And we will stop it now. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you took the time out of your day to watch this and I will see you all in the next one if you have questions join my discord it's in the description below and yeah or leave a comment bye